Outer space, often thought of as nothing, actually has distinct classifications. The first is interplanetary space, which exists within the confines of a solar system, defined by the solar wind emanating from the sun. However, space extends far beyond this bubble of plasma. Interstellar space lies between solar systems, beyond the reach of any stellar influence, existing solely under the dominion of the galaxy's central black hole. While that might sound desolate, there's another, even more mind-boggling classification of nothingness, intergalactic space. This vast expanse, making up roughly 90% of the universe, is surprisingly inconsistent and fluctuating. A prime example is the Booty's Void, also known as the Great Nothing. This spherical region spans a staggering 330 million light years in diameter. Imagine fitting 10 septillion, 526 sextillion, 629 quintillion, 999 quadrillion, 999 trillion, 999 billion, 348 million, 3,106 bananas in a line. That's roughly the volume of the great nothing. Despite its size, you'd only find about 60 galaxies there, compared to the thousands you'd normally expect. The discovery of other galaxies, like the Andromeda Galaxy in 1923, highlights just how empty this void truly is. Imagine placing our Milky Way galaxy in the center of the Booty's Void. If we did this in the 1920s, we wouldn't have known other galaxies existed. So why does this gap in space exist? To answer that, we need a basic understanding of the universe's structure. Galaxies cluster together to form groups. The Milky Way, for example, resides in the Virgo Cluster. Zooming out further, these clusters combine into superclusters. Our Virgo Cluster belongs to the Laniakea Supercluster. Even superclusters have giant voids within them, with the Booty's Void being a prime example. Zooming out yet again, these massive voids separate superclusters, the largest of which being the Booty's Void itself. So, why does matter clump up, leaving these huge voids? The short answer, and a bit confusing, is that we believe it's due to fluctuations just after the Big Bang that have evolved and expanded over 13.8 billion years, resulting in areas with much lower material density compared to their surroundings. The long answer is a bit easier to grasp, though more complex. Let's rewind to the Big Bang, specifically 10 circumflex 32 seconds after the event. At this point, the visible universe was incredibly small, incomprehensibly so. At this scale, quantum fluctuations of space-time occurred. Think of zooming in really close to the space between atoms and seeing energy constantly appearing and disappearing. That's the basic idea of quantum fluctuations. However, these fluctuations are normally so tiny, they have no effect. But when the entire observable universe was that small, these random energy bursts significantly impacted things. Interactions between fundamental matter and trapped light caused oscillations, essentially the universe playing a game of Pong with photons. This cosmic Pong continued for roughly 380,000 years until these interactions led to the formation of the first atoms. With the formation of atoms, light was no longer confined and became free to expand outwards indefinitely, as did everything else. This is why the universe is constantly expanding, and we have a picture of this very moment called the Cosmic Microwave Background Radiation, a kind of fingerprint of the universe's early stages. The random fluctuations you see in this radiation mirror the conditions when everything first started to expand. These fluctuations are why matter clumps together. It started that way due to those random quantum fluctuations in the nothingness between. These empty regions continue to grow due to the universe's relentless expansion. So, while there's a vast emptiness out there, it's anything but boring. 